good morning good afternoon good evening depending on where you are around the world uh i have this very late very late broadcast very late broadcast on this day some people are already in saturday 14th of march some people are still 13th of march 2020 i have to quickly address some some pressing issues as it concerns Bab biafra i have to address this issue it is going to be very brief and of course i know a lot of you are sleeping chigozie annie thank you for joining me you people that are awake my own franklin chima okoye thank you for joining me collins Eze, thank you for joining me sustain baba thank you for joining me even this late you are all still awake Ike Chuku Chuku Emeka, thank you for joining me. Charles Harry, thank you for joining me. Emeka Patrick, thank you for joining me. I'm going to use three minutes, three minutes, which is going to be exactly an hour. So Fatip, thank you for joining me. Rosemary, thank you for joining me. Don King, thank you for joining me. Uh, Thompson, thank you for joining me. Three minutes I'm going to use. Uh, I think three minutes is even too much to, to call your names. Uh, Gloria, thank you for joining me this late, this late. Uchenna, thank you for joining me. John Ifoani, thank you for joining me. Uh, Aku Dinobi, thank you for joining me. Hunt Gruz, thank you for joining me. Naji Dave, thank you for joining me this late. So Madina Lion, thank you for joining me. Destiny Riches, thank you for joining me. John Ifoani, thank you for joining me. Kenzie Kingston, thank you for joining me this late. <coughs> Mega Patrick, yes, I see you. Osi Ude I see you. Tony Chuku, I see you. We are not sleeping. Our enemies are not sleeping, and we are not sleeping. Emmanuel Opara, thank you for joining me. Udoka, thank you for joining me. Yes, I see you. Franklin Chick, uh, Michael George, thank you for joining me. Chidon Nedu, thank you for joining me. Chuku Emeka Valentine, thank you for joining me. Yes, I see you. Fred Ayogo, thank you for joining me. Eric Sonny, thank you for joining me. This is very, very late and a lot of people are already sleeping. But this, uh, the idea of this video, when they work tomorrow, they can share it. Stanley Mbanu, thank you for joining me. AK, thank you for joining me. Michael Boriba, thank you for joining me. Kelvin Rueben, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. Obu Valentine, thank you for joining me. Toski Ofokansi, thank you for joining me. Okolo Emeka, thank you for joining me from Helsinki. Thank you, Okole Maker from Helsinki, for joining me this late. I, I think uh, every, every one of you should be sleeping. Miriam, thank you for joining me. Ekua, thank you for joining me. Josinki White Dove, thank you for joining me. This is going to be a very important uh, uh, information and the analysis I'm going to give you this early morning and this late night, depending on where you are. Okafo, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, one fear, thank you for joining me, Master Joko. Wisdom, uh, Sky Dawn, thank you for joining me, Wobi, thank you for joining me, Elendu, thank you for joining me, Treya, thank you for joining me, Austin Chooks, thank you for joining me, Stanley, thank you for joining me. So, I'm going to, I'm going to, before I start, I'm about to start now, Edwin, thank you for joining me, oh, come on, oh, Parker, thank you for joining me, it's my Michael, thank you, I see you are watching. I see also Eze Obonna Mazuchenna, thank you for watching. Bishop Manley, thank you for watching. Solomon Chima, thank you for watching. Emmanuel Ejekem, thank you for watching. Robert Unebu, thank you for watching me and stay with me this late. Jeff Uzo, thank you. Now, <coughs> I have to start. Very briefly, this video, I'll try to make it, this live broadcast, I'll try to make it as snappy as possible. Now, I want you people to listen to this video and I'm going to address some things. Uh, I was <coughs> in Lagos attending the INEC uh, retreat. 
research on uh, electronic reforms, most of our colleagues were also outside the chambers. So I want to commend him for the efforts he made and all our colleagues who were there uh, during the, co the conversation. So we met as a caucus of the Southeast National Assembly last night after consulting with our people and getting their feelings regarding this uh, issue. And uh, we decided that the best approach would be a constructive engagement with the National Assembly leadership. So this afternoon, we had a very good conversation with both the Senate President and also the Speaker of the House of Representatives. I was here to report that uh, we had a meaningful discussion. They showed not just concern, but commitment to uh, addressing these issues. And they were satisfied with those assurances. So we are believing that the matter uh, will either be revisited or since it has not been passed in the House, that uh, appropriate things will be done. Uh, and then our people's fears will be assuaged. So I would like to thank the Senate President and the Speaker for those assurances and their commitment to the national unity and unity of this country and also for justice. Uh, let me pause it before I continue. Now, anybody who knows any senator from the southeast of Nigeria, after watching this video, send this video to them. First of all, I would like to remind these senators that the Nigeria government, it is not them that should be reminding Nigeria government controlled by Fulanese that there is a zone called Southeast Zone. <coughs> Where the, sorry, they, are, they shouldn't be the one reminding the federal government of Nigeria that there is a zone called Southeast Zone. Southeast Zone, according to them, they are the one who created it. It, was, it is not or was not the senators that created that zone and submitted the name to Abuja. It was the Abuja that created that name and rather submitted the name and the zone and the constituencies, including all the federal constituencies, all, these, uh, uh, all the constituencies in those zones. They created it in Abuja. It was not create, created in eastern Nigeria and then forwarded to Abuja. So, what they are doing now is uncalled for. And of course, it is uncalled for in the sense that these senators who are standing in this camera being led by Ike Ekuremado should have realized that this is what we are shouting for. They should have known that what the federal government has done is, is they have given them the green light. It is time you leave Nigeria. You are not welcome. And this is now going contrary to what Ibus used to say. Ibu Adeji. Onya jola jo anaha jo mwya means if you are rejected, you cannot reject yourself. <coughs> so, I'm sorry for the cough. So, if the federal government of Nigeria have rejected the, the Igbo speaking part of Biafra, you cannot reject yourself. And it is an insult to Ibus. It is the biggest insult to Biafrans that these senators will come and start talking this way. Instead of taking the bull by the horn, they come and start saying that there was a mistake and they are now uh, they have uh, negotiated with senator, they have negotiated with uh, senior president, there is a mistake, and at the end of the day, they claim that it is just a proposal. What an insult coming from Ekurimado and other senators of the Southeast. <coughs> Do you need these people to start shooting you at the Red Chamber before you know that your days are numbered as Nigerians. The senators of the southeast of Nigeria, the Biafra land, 
Are you waiting until they begin to kill you and assassinate you before you know you are not welcomed in Nigeria? Is that what you're waiting for? Are you waiting for the time that all of you will begin, they will begin to kill you? are even 15 in number. And let me continue this video so that you people will understand what I am saying. That we already know. We already know that every part of Nigeria, at least for the main time that the, the place continues to be a country, will be part of the repayment of this loan. And this is what Simon Epa and every Biafra agitators was shouting about. You will be the part of the repayment of the loan, whether you like it or not. And not only that you will be part of the repayment, you are going to pay almost 70 to 80% of the loan. 70 to 80% of the loan will come from the Biafrans. That is the fact. And this fact cannot be disputed because the loan will come from the oil, it will come from the revenue that are generated for the, from the businesses in Nigeria and who are those running those businesses. They are all Igbos. Dan Kote, who is a richest, the richest man in Africa, should have come out and borrowed the money to, to Nigeria government. Or they should, they should begin to tax all the former head of state in Nigeria from the north who have embezzled more than Abacha. That money, they should have gotten it from Nigeria. So, now, Abaribe was the only senator available during the time of this debate, or at least the one who stood his ground. And Abaribe, like we all know, we know who he is. He is always standing, not just for Biafra or for Igbo, he has always stand for the truth, and he don't look face. And these are, when you see Abaribe, you have seen a Biafra man, because that is exactly what we are made of. We are men. We, we have balls. We don't, we don't behave like women and that those who, even women, are stronger. In the Western world, women are prime ministers, women are president, women are doing wonders. But in Africa, the president of Nigeria today said the women belong in the kitchen. But in a, in a civilized world, women are doing wonders. And even the governors of Biafra land of eastern state they are all behaving like people who never governed or who never supervised anything in primary or secondary school but we are looking at them so now let me continue so that you will listen to this video and i will now make my analysis and you will send this video to these people so that they will begin to receive sense Are you listening to that? 
This information Equeremado is dishing out here is something that 90% of Nigerians don't know. This particular information he gave right now is something that 90% of Nigerians don't know. Because every Nigerian focus on the security, focus on minister, focus on judiciary, you nobody know the information Ekweremado is dishing out here. He said that the Southeast has been marginalized in National Assembly. From the clerk to whatever position you have in National Assembly, there is no single Southeast person. And this information, 90% of Nigeria don't know it. But he leaked that information here. Continue watching. Did you hear that? These positions he mentioned, including the, the public, uh, public uh, complaint commission and what have you. Did you see what he said? Did you hear that? He said they have agreed to address those things, those positions, when, when vacancy. Hi. What an insult. They have agreed to address it when there is vacancy. And Equeremado is standing and saying these things. That they have agreed to ad address it when there is vacancy. And that vacancy may never come. When there is the vacancy. Are you people hearing that? We are talking only about generals. We are talking about CGN. We are talking about the security chiefs. We are talking about ministers. But at the National Assembly, the highest impunity and marginalization of Ndibo and the southeast part of Biafra is taking place. The biggest impunity is taking place at the National Assembly. And then you will hear a Kuremado lamenting that there are only 15 in number. There are only 15 from the southeast. And that is what, including Namdi Kano, the Mazin Namdi Kano has been shouting for ages. What are you going to do with 15 senators from the southeast? You are already caged. How, is, how do you think that 15 senators can can change or affect anything that will be for the interest of the Southeast part of Biafra. How? Now, continue to watch. Uh -huh. Another thing is that Ekuremado focused on this borrowing plan. What is borrowing, borrowing plan? The signal has been given to you. What is borrowing plan? Okay, why do they now disburse those, the plan and they excluded the southeast, the Igbos, the Igbos speaking Biafra? And you are there instead of calling it the name the way it is, saying it the way it is, you are saying it is just a plan. A plan. Once it is public, it is no longer a plan. They have executed it. And now you are fighting so that they will correct what, and they will correct that plan. So if you claim that this is a plan, why are you now shouting? Since it is still a plan. 
Why are you why are you running around and having your Southeast Senators Kakus meeting? Why? Because this is only a plan. You should have waited until they finish the plan and then borrow the money and then disburse the money and start to execute the project. Then that is when you will know that it is no longer a plan. Then you can come out and start talking. So why are you talking now? If you are now calming us down or calming all the other people down that this is only a plan. So why are you running up and down now to make sure that, that, that they, they withdraw that plan and replan again? If it is just a plan. This is not just a plan. This is a deliberate act to compel you, the senators of the Southeast, to come and start begging the North. And they got you people very well. I don't know, because a lot of you are well-educated, very brainy, as we can see. <coughs> you people are not behaving like Igbos. What the North did, and what this presidency did, is to get the attention that you are giving them now. That is exactly what they want you to do. They want you to come and start running around and start begging and lobbying. Lobbying, uh, uh, exposing you to extra work. To start lobbying for what is ordinarily and naturally your right. You do not need to lobby. You should sit in your offices and start doing something else. And the people who believe in Nigeria, in one Nigeria, will draft and disburse this this loan according to the capacity and according to projects needed in all region but they didn't do that they want you they want to send a message to you that you are no longer welcome in nigeria and they want to subject you to come and start doing what you are doing now lobbying and trying to 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 work hard to see that they address how can you be sounding like this, senators from the Southeast? Is it like you people are actually believing that there is no motive or that you don't know the reason why the federal government controlled by Fulani omitted you? I am beginning to, I don't understand. Because this is a deliberate act. A deliberate act to give you signal that you are no longer welcome in this country, you people should start buckling up and go your way. And what they, they did also is to give the other part of Biafra bribe. What they did to the South-South was actually a bribe. Bribery. Bribery. Because how can you give South-South $4 billion? You give the south, the uh, northwest, or well, not central, whatever, six billion, six billion dollars, and other part of the north, six billion dollars. You give southwest two hundred million dollars or three hundred million dollars. What is it? You give the middle belt, what, and then you come to where the oil money is coming from. You gave them four billion, only to try to divide the Biafra by bribing the South-South and say, take this chicken change. Meanwhile, the oil is coming from there and people are dying and the land, the land of Ogoni, the land of Ijo, the land, uh, uh, or the, the sea in those places and the river has been damaged by oil spillage. And they are sharing the biggest part of the money to not. So check it now. How much did the not receive? Two, two regions of the north received $12 billion. $12 billion. $12 billion. Now, plus the southwest, south-south, and the middle belt, you see how much is there? It is not even half what two sessions of the not received. 
Can you make the calculation? $4 billion plus $300,000 or $200,000 or 400000 or 400000 whatever it is, but at least it's about between $300,000 to $200,000. Uh, uh, $300 million received by, by Southwest. Then plus it to the one received by Middle Belt. It is not up to... If, in fact, it is not up to one. It is not up to six billion. It is not up to six billion. That is two. That is three region. Three region, the middle belt, the southwest, and the south south combined is not up to one. One state in the north, or one region in the north, they receive six point six billion, and then. Abaribe fought like a man, like he always do. But look at the senators, they are coming here to tell us that this is just a plan. So, Ekweremadu and Co. should have waited until they execute it so that they will have reason to tell us what they are telling us now. Because according to him, he said, this is just, just a plan. Now, continue watching. So that's why this double before the People's Parliament, where every part of Nigeria is represented, to have a conversation and discussion to be sure that even spread. That is actually the, the philosophy behind sending it to the National Assembly. So that's why we are using all the legislative um, to have been to ensure that the proper thing is done. And I, oh no, okay. Yes, please, sir. Senators from the East never saw that document before the passage. And um, so, and I commended him for his effort. And also that. Um... Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Hey, Emeka, good luck. Emma, good luck. Thank you for joining me. I call your name. Thank you for joining me. Did you hear that? They said. The senators from the Southeast didn't see the document. The document was shared to every other senators from every other zone. So what we are saying here is not, it is beyond, what is happening now is beyond what these senators seems not to understand where they are. And it is time if you are close to them, in addition to what you are talking now, let them understand they are in Nigeria where they are not welcomed. Koro, what we call in Nigeria, Koro Koro. They say the documents were not made available to the senators from Southeast. So none of them know what was going on. And this one of uh, E.K. Guremado coming here to tell you that they were in function in the INEC uh, Electoral Commission, whatever uh, re retreat in, in Lagos, and other senators have something doing. They don't know about this document. They were all senators in the Red Chamber, but none of them have the knowledge about this document until they brought it to the floor. That was the question. Are you people hearing that? They were not aware of this document, but every other senator from Nigeria, from the North, knew about it. Is it not a clear indication and sign that it is time for Igbos to go? Is it not a clear indication and sign that it is time for Biafra to have their independence? And these people, instead of taking the opportunity that has come now, because the Nigeria, is, they are tired of us. They know we have exposed them. They know we have destroyed the foundation of Nigeria. They know that we have naked Nigeria. We are naked Nigeria international community. They know that now everything about them is no more and no longer hidden. And they are not hiding it anymore. They are not hiding it. Now, continue to watch. It's not a matter of fighting or, or any struggle, any uh, this day, thing of words. We believe, it, as I said, in critical engagement of our colleagues. Yeah. Remember, too, that I was the Minister President and Mata came in last night. And it was all discussed. So our people have been with material that has shown commitment to this. So if we're not concerned, we won't be here. So this is part of the commitment of our legislators from that 
this side from the southeast to matters concerning us. So I believe that every person from the southeast committed to ensuring that the right is done. That's why we're elected to, to be able to represent them. Yeah. Uh, my name is Pamit Me to sit down at this time because of the campaign of the Senate in which all of you in the Senate have appeared on one page. Even the southeast. Yeah, um, I can't remember any day 109 senators were present in a city. Maybe except even during the day of inauguration, it never happened. Yeah. We all have our own assignments. And um, so if a matter comes up, I am not there. And something, a decision is taken. We have under our rules what we could do. Right? So, which is what we are raising now. What we could do is, if a decision has been taken, we can now come under our rules for the matter to be rescinded and be taken again. But all you need to do is to come with a proper motion. So, we will understand that. We've been here for a long time. So, so, and you can't be in two places at the same time. So all those senators from the time who are not there, they also are part of one part of the national assignment or the other. So it's so so it's unfair to say, oh, they, they were not all there. All right? So and I So the senators that are from the southeast, according to Epore Mado, that they were in other national assignment and they cannot be in two places at the same time. And they cannot be blamed. Listen, did you hear that? Now, why will they send them out to some national assignment when a crucial issue of national interest is being discussed at the Red Chamber? That is the way. That is what these people, what Equimado is not thinking. Why is it that it is only that time when a crucial issue like this that is capable of giving us Biafra in two months, when this kind of issue that is capable of giving us Biafra in two months will be discussed, that is when they have other national engagement. That is when they send Equimado to Lagos for INEC retreat. INEC. INEC retreat. That is when they know that other people, other senators should go for another, for once a national assignment. Why didn't they wait? Why didn't they wait until the, 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 the senators from the South is since the, the, the president of Senate who have seen the document and see that the South East has been sidelined and it is zero. Why didn't he ask a national a nationalist or a one nigeria and is a president of senate why did he not wait until the people who are from the southeast that has been sidelined in the document that is that is in his position until they come but the time they left they send them out on purpose so that when they come back they will begin to fight like they are fighting now. In their of something that is ordinarily, they should not even talk about it. Ordinarily. And they want to ridicule them. And they are ridiculing them. And they are falling for this trap that Igbos are begging for their right. Continue watching. So if it comes up nice, I've been taken. Well, that is a uh, democracy in action. So you can the majority minority may have their say, but majority will have their way. Recall that the Southeast have only 15 senators, while others have between 18 and 21. So it's part of the, the issue of majority majority will be talking about. That was been pushing for restructuring. So even if you put all the 15 members of the National Assembly from the, from the South in the Senate, and you now did you hear that? He said, that is why they are pushing for restructuring. If you know a Kuremado, go and tell him. We are no longer interested in pushing for restructuring. What are you going to restructure? Are you going to restructure the Nigeria that will still have Boko Haram as member of parliament? Are you restructuring a Nigeria that is still going to have Boko Haram member as a general commanding 6th Division of Nigeria Army. Are you going to have a restructured Nigeria 
that you will have a police IG from the north commanding all 36 states? Are you going to have a restructured Nigeria that we are going to be using Nigeria passport? Or are you going to have a restructured Nigeria that you will allow the Biafran, the old Eastern region, as you call it, if it is restructured, to have their own international passport? This is the questions that need to be answered. Before anybody will begin to talk about restructuring, we are, not, we are no longer interested. It's like these people have lost touch with reality. It is time those of you who are close to them begin to talk and send our videos to them. They need to be watching it. How can you be talking about restructuring? In this situation Nigeria is today, when the, when the security system has been compromised, you have Boko Haram everywhere, you want to restructure Nigeria, and you still stay with Nomadic and Nomadic Fulanese. Now, continue watching. Did you hear that? He said that they are begging or they are appealing to their colleagues to accommodate Southeast. What an insult. This is this this what Equimado have done or are saying is the biggest insult on Indibo and Biafras at large. You are begging a government, your colleagues, who saw the document before you, they could not notify you that it's a document because they have all ganged up against all of you. All of them saw the document. They have the document. They didn't give it to you. And these are the same people you are coming now to tell that let us see how to accommodate you so, who is your landlord? Is somebody your landlord? Are you not supposed to be a landlord in Nigeria? In Nigeria project? If you are begging for somebody to accommodate you, it means that you have accepted to be a tenant. Are you thinking that Igbos are tenants in Nigeria? I don't know what, where you are coming from. Why are you saying that let us see how to accommodate Southeast? Who is your landlord? Who is your landlord? Who is your landlord? You are supposed to be a landlord to accommodate others and not others accommodating you. Please, you people, should, you people should sit up. It has come to the point that maybe we will be spending our time talking to all of you senators. Nobody knows it all. We are not saying that we, Biafra agitators, knows it all, but believe me, we are one million miles ahead of you people. One million miles ahead. So sometimes when we talk, you people can listen, should listen to what we are saying and do exactly the way we are saying it. You cannot be, be, be begging and, and lobbying for, for, for you to, for southeast of Nigeria, part of Biafra land, to be accommodated in Nigeria. When the Nigeria government is telling you to go, to go and have your, your, your peace and country, you are saying, we are talking to our colleagues to see how they will accommodate Southeast. That is a very big insult. And this is what you are saying now is exactly what they want you people to do and say. And you are saying it. They will sit somewhere in Abuja. They will sit somewhere in, in Sokoto. They will sit somewhere in Jigawa and be laughing at this video. Look at them. They are begging. What is the difference between what this press statement you are giving here now and what they, they said, they claim that uh, Niamwodo did, going to the north to kneel down. 
Of course, he did not respond. He don't need to respond to that, but that is an allegation. The only difference here is that you are giving a press conference. Otherwise, this is more than kneeling down to beg. For Christ's sake, you are lobbying so that your colleague in the National Assembly who saw the document, they sidelined you and they still went ahead to debate on it. You want to lobby so that the, the, the Southeast will be accommodated as, as, as tenants in Nigeria project. Now, continue watching. You see, why I bring this video? So that you people will see what is going on. And like I have made some comments. First of all, the senator from the southeast, which is the part of Biafra, should know that this is a clear indication and this is a clear signal that it is time you start packing your loads. And not only that, this is going to end here. Very soon, they will start to pick you one after the other. Are you waiting until they start killing you? Is that what you people are waiting for? Equeremado, you know how they invaded your house try to assassinate assassinate you and all that using the enemy within using the enemy within the video footage of the attack in your house Ekweremado, is what you know no other nigerian know it you have it security agency have it i want to ask you today what is the outcome of the investigation of that assassination attempt in your life, Ekwere Mado. What is going on? Why have you decided to keep silent on that assassination attempt case? Why have you decided not to be talking about it? Is there anything we should know about this whole alleged assassination attempt in your life? Because you are behaving and talking as if they have not attempted to kill you. Is it until they succeed that you cannot have ball behind your leg to talk and start demanding, not just restructuring? Since you have been shouting restructuring, is anybody listening to you? Has anybody listening to you in Nigeria project? That you want to restructure? Has anybody listening to you? Nobody will listen to you. It is time all of you who came to this place and give this press statement start agitating for referendum of Biafra Republic. That is the way to go. And if you feel that what I am saying now and what other people are saying is, is rubbish, that nobody is going to, you will wait when this heat will go and come to you you will begin to shout biafra and you will not even know when you start shouting biafra but by then you may be shouting biafra with a very great loss the opportunity to start shouting biafra fresh and start shouting for referendum of biafra republic is now these people have spitted on your faces. They spitted on your faces. And you are here giving press statement that you are going to see how to accommodate. Accommodate Southeast. What an insult. What an insult. This single action, this action alone from the federal government of Nigeria is enough for all of you to pack your bag and leave Abuja. This single action is enough for all of you to pack your bag and do what? Leave Abuja. And 
Like I say, I told Nigerians last time that there is a need for, for them to, to file a lawsuit against the federal government. And I'm talking, as I'm talking to you today, the, the uh, Igbo deputies based in the organization of the Igbos based in South Africa have done exactly how we suggested. They have filed a lawsuit against Nigeria government and also which the party, the party to the lawsuit is the China, China Bank. And of course, like you all know, the uh, National Assembly, the, uh, the uh, House of Representatives, they have voted against this loan because of, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the confusion and crisis. But it is not about crisis or crisis management now. What we are talking now is that the damage has been done and it is not just a damage, it is a clear indication and a deliberate act. It is a deliberate act. A deliberate act to ask Biafrans and Igbos to leave Nigeria. And it baffles me that a senator like Ekoremado, who have served as a senator for many years, will in 2020 be saying he want to see how to talk to his colleagues to accommodate Southeast. That is an insult. It is time we leave. It is time we leave. Ekoremado and other senators should know that a man does not die twice. You die only once. And the greatest mistake you will do in life is to die. And you die for Nigeria. The greatest mistake you will do as a man in life is to die. And you die without achieving the aim that God created you to achieve. Your aim, most of you, the senators, that you have the privilege to serve as a senator of Nigeria in 2020 is for a purpose. It is not just a coincidence. It is a purpose that God has put you to be a senator in this crucial time, in this 2020, so that you will be part of Nigeria disintegration so that you will be part of Biafra freedom. If you don't want to be part of this Biafra freedom and you die with this, with this task that God gave you, that will be the worst death. Don't think that you are safe in Nigeria. It is better you made your intention. I told you people before that they, no, but they don't trust you. They don't trust you they don't trust governors. They don't trust any politician from East because they know inside all of you that have just stood there and talk. Inside all of you, everybody wants Biafra, including you, Senator Ike Ekoremado. They know you very well. They know that inside of you, your flesh and blood is Biafra. So that you are not mentioning Biafra now doesn't mean that they don't know you are Biafra. Inside your flesh and blood. And for this reason, they know if any single opportunity is given to you, the next thing you will do is to project everything you do to favor Biafra. And that is why they can never give you people any chance. You can imagine when they have this kind of loan issue, you were not even notified. You don't see the document. Meanwhile, every other senators have seen it. It is time all of you begin to think about Biafra freedom. Let it be what you have achieved in your life. Let it be what God has implanted in you 
that make you to become the senator in this 2020, be part of Biafra freedom so that you will have peace with God at the end of the day. Thank you, all of you who have, who have stayed this long to watch this broadcast, share this broadcast, share this video, download it and share it to senators. And I will be making, I will be making great analysis in later days because this evening I am so tired. But of course, like you can see, our enemies are not sleeping and we are not sleeping as well. We will be following them bomber to bomber. Thank you for joining me this late. And those of you who I have not called your name, I recognize you. Sorry if you know that I have not called your name. I will use two, two minutes or one minute to greet you again. I am also being a thank you for staying this late with me. Chinedu, I am a thank you for staying this late with me. It is, we are all in this together. Obi, Elijah, thank you. Anthony Onwara, thank you for staying this late with me. Onyinye Kate, thank you for staying this late with me. Chizoba Felix, thank you for staying this late with me. Don Manzi, I greet you. Thank you for staying this late. Oscar Ayang, thank you for staying this late. Mwachiku, Pastor Chris, I see you, my own Pastor Chris. Thank you for staying with me. Peter Okeke, thank you. Green Okano, thank you for staying with me this late. Chumi Johnson, thank you very much for staying this late with me. Share this video. David Upokolo, thank you for staying this late. Emmanuel Ebuzia, thank you for staying this late. Eze Solomon, thank you for staying this late. Chukuma Onyenekwe, Azi Peter, thank you all for staying this late. Bonnie Chinonso, thank you for staying this late with me. Walter Arne, thank you for staying this late with me. Ugodia Thompson, thank you, my own Ugodia. Stella Benjamin, Thank you, Ejo, for Eze. All of you are wonderful people. Thank you for staying this late with me. Chimezia Chibo, John Marx. Thank you for staying this late with me. Thank you very much. Share this video, download it, and share it. Uche C. Okolo Cha. Thank you for staying with this late. Enero Rose. Thank you for staying this late with me. Unamdi. Thank you. Chine Du Kennedy. Thank you for staying this late with me. We are in this fight, in this course together. Chijoke, Oliver Chibuzo, thank you for staying with me. Michael Boriba, thank you. Ruben Ben, Chuku, thank you for staying with me. Bill Nad, thank you for staying with me. This late Pija Eja, thank you for staying with this late Patrick Amai Fula. Thank you for staying this late on your Kate. I greet you again for the second time. Fortune Ewuzia, thank you for staying this late with me. Jack Austin. Thank you for staying this late with me, A.K. Akobondu. Thank you for staying with David Omi, my own David Omi. Thank you for staying this late. Adolf Ejimadu, thank you. Gilbert Demi, now I have to go. My voice is disappearing. Iboko Chibike, thank you for staying this late. Thank you all. And Michael Smith, Kenzo Pass, thank you all. I love you all. We will begin to do this and Nigeria is going down as we speak. Everybody knows that Nigeria can never succeed. They can never succeed. They are going down every day and we will stop at nothing until Biafra is restored. For your own good, for your own generation, for your own unborn children, you are going to enjoy Biafra Republic. You are going to have a country that will be free from crime. You are going to have a country that electricity will be available. You are going to have a country that hospital will be there for you. The health system will work. The social service will work. Thank you very much as you support us by watching and sharing our videos. Good night and have a wonderful weekend.